everyone. Welcome to today's demo from Open LMS for LMS Integrations. I'm Nikki House, a member of the professional learning team here at Educause, and I'll be your host for today. As a reminder, you will use the chat to post your questions and comments, and if you need captions, click the CC or closed caption button at the bottom of the screen. And without further ado, I will turn it over to our presenters from Open LMS. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Ivana Delfra. I'm with Open LMS, and I am joined here today with my colleagues, Trevor Havey and Tyra Cruz. Tyra Cruz will be the solutions architect demoing our product today, and we're happy to show you. But before we do that, I just want to give a quick overview of just who Open LMS is. So Open LMS, we are the ultimate partner in building, maintaining, and upgrading your ideal learning management solution. The OpenLMS EDU platform, which you'll be seeing later today, is built on top of Moodle, allowing a fully customizable open source LMS that's tailored to your organization's needs. We are a global organization, and we're also part of the Learning Technologies Group. So why OpenLMS? So the platform addresses your organization's pain points head-on by offering a scalable, flexible, and user-friendly LMS that simplifies content management, enhances learner engagement, and then just ensures overall a great user experience. The platform, like I stated, we are going to be showing you today is our EDU platform driven for our higher education market. Three tools that are exclusively to our Open LMS clients are Conduit Open Reports Engine and Personal Learning Designers that Tyra will be showing you little in a little bit. So, with that, I'm gonna pass over the keys to Tyra and allow her to show you the platform, but you will be able to contact our team with any questions or anything as well. My information is right there. And then we'll also be sending you some follow-up of, of our platform today too. So with that, Tyra, I'm going to pass the keys off to you. Hello everyone, I'm Tyra Cruz. I am one of the Solutions Architect here at OpenLMS and my role is to help with the pre-sales process as well as onboarding. onboarding. I have previously been a reading coach, uh, instructional coach for teachers teaching reading, and have worked with one of the leaders in the SIS business. And moving forward, I am hoping to be able to onboard you all with our OpenLMS platform. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you. I am hailing from a rainy Williamsport, Pennsylvania, but that's okay. I'm excited because the Eagles won yesterday. So with that in mind, you should be seeing my screen. In OpenLMS, we have a product that allows you to scale with your system. What we're looking at right now is the home screen. And here we would be able to customize for you, for your branding and look and feel, and be able to just give you the LMS that is easy to use. I'm going here, I can see what we deliver. All of this would be your schools, any type of featured courses. Many clients will use this area when they're talking about maybe a visiting professor or something where we want to really highlight a course that is being featured at the university. I can see here, I can embed some videos so that I can see information and really give the user a feeling of being engaged with the LMS. What we're going to first look at is one of the things that Ivana talked about, and that is our personalized learning designer. It's a really cool tool and personalized learning designer that is a mouthful. So I always say the cool kids just say PLD. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into a course and I'm going to just happen to go into my courses. I'm logged in as an administrator as well as an instructor because I am showing that I could have multiple roles within the system. So this particular course, I am a co-instructor on. 
and it's an algebra course. And what the PLD allows us to do as I click into the course, it allows you to give personalized communication to the students who are enrolled into the course. And it allows it to be automatic so that you set it and forget it. And it allows the system to say, oh, someone just joined the course. So I'm going to send them a message and greet them. Or they scored a certain amount on a particular quiz. So I'm going to allow them to have a certain message. Or let's say I'll go ahead to my course dashboard so that you can see at different parts of my course at a glance, it allows me to maybe put them in a group. So let's say someone didn't do so well on a quiz. They're able to then maybe get some extra help and be put into a particular uh, group that allows them to get special uh, attention. So it's really nice to be able to have that flexibility and I'm just going to go ahead and show you how the PLD that is unique to us works. So that personalized learning designer, if I'm setting it up, they're rules. And what I'm able to do is have some that are maybe not active at this time or others that are active. And I can set up various parameters that allows me to have a sense of community and create that right within the course. So for instance, I have this one right here that says entered the course for the first time. So if I go ahead and I'm going to take a look at it so you can see what I mean by the rules, we have various things called events, conditions, and actions. So the event would be a student entered the course for the first time whether it was on a mobile app or also if it was on their desktop as well as there are certain conditions they have to be a student and when they enroll into the course they'll get this nice little message that is right here i'm going to actually edit the message and say um warmly your instructor so I have the ability, I'm going to go ahead and save that and have a message. And in this case, it's an alert right in the system. So this way, if I am taking an online class, I have some sense of community that I am starting to develop with the um, particular students. And also, I can even do what we call insert tokens so that this is how I make it personal. So if I wanted to send them a hyperlink to something, I could do that. Give them, I'm starting and giving the student their name, any type of points and so forth. When I'm doing um, what they got on a quiz or so forth, I can have that right here and insert these tokens. So that's something that is a pretty cool thing. And the action right here, I'm displaying an alert but I could also change it to, oh, send them an email, go to a specific activity. I can um, allow them to be added to groups and so forth. So it also can unlock a release code to say, you did something well, let's move on to the next part. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and I am going to go back to my course and let you see that once a user go to my course dashboard and I can see my participants here I can see these students I can see I have two instructors and I have right now four students two of whom have never logged in oh pardon me I'm going to go ahead and log in as one of those students so that you can see when they go into the class, what happens as far as the message from the personalized learning designer, as well as I am going to look at the person taking a quiz and getting information from the personalized learning designer. The course is easy for participants to navigate. 
They can see different topics, the introduction if you wanted to. And as an instructor, I can just come in here, edit something, and it is instantaneous. There's not a wait time. So that is something that's really awesome. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna log out so that you can see how it looks when I log in as this student. So I'm gonna log in as Charles. And I'm in as Charles, he's right here. We also have the ability as many um, places in the business, other vendors in the business, to have a user tour. You can personalize these so that when someone is new to the system, they are easily acclimated to what's going on. I'm gonna skip the tour. And as Charles, I'm gonna go to his course page as a student. He doesn't have as many changes that he can make. And as soon as he goes into the course, that message that we had, here's another user tour. I'm gonna skip it. Hi, Charles, welcome to Algebra and so forth. This just creates that sense of community so that the person who is taking the course doesn't just simply feel like, oh, they are a number, but they're also a part of the class. There's also a PLD set up for, I'm gonna attempt a quiz. There's many different quiz questions or formats, but to show you how you can have this information, different question types, we wanna keep the students engaged. I know I have three children currently in college and they have hybrid classes, online classes, in-person classes. And of course, the most, uh, cl the classes that they enjoy the most are the ones that they are mostly engaged in. So we wanna make sure that we are keeping our students engaged. Everything I'm doing right now can also be done in the mobile app. So even if a student is online or offline, once they logged in, our mobile app would update. So we have true and false questions, as you can see. We also have some um, uh, multiple choice, drag and drop, fill in the blank. All of those are available. So I'm just gonna get all of the questions right so you can see the message that would come up. Um, and once this person submits their quiz questions as a student, they do, of course, have the ability to go back and return and see if something needs to be changed, but they can submit. They're sure they want to. Oh, and Charles did an awesome job. So he gets a pop-up message. We could have sent him an email and as well. So. Those are questions that someone created. So that's what Charles was able to um, do and create, and he got the message that came there. We also have the ability to generate questions using AI. AI is the big everything to do, of course, right now. And that is something that we take very seriously and we have on our roadmap as well as currently in our system. So what we're going to take a look at is I'm going to go back into my courses. And while I'm in a course, and this is going to just be for, for fun, I can go in here and what I'm able to use is my AI questions. So I can bring in, um, I can bring in a, a document and type a, a lot to generate questions, or I can type in a topic. Um, I'll just say, I, I'm a died hard, I'm a Philly girl. Um, so when I see AI, I think of Alan Iverson, but I know it's artificial intelligence, so that's fun. But I'm gonna tell the system, you know what? Generate four questions, multiple choice. I could have more, um, but right now I'm just gonna do four and generate 
multiple choice questions on an Eagles football. What the system is going to do, it's, it's going to go out and it is going to create four random questions with this um, within the system that a teacher or instructor can then use and add to their quizzes. So what is also fun about this while that's generating, and I have some that were already um, created while that's going, is it will also, in the future, what we have going on, you can take AI, you can generate the tone of the questions, you can generate the types of questions beyond just multiple choice, you can take information and also bring it into a chart. So let's say I wanted to say, oh, I'm teaching about the clouds because I am a meteorology. That I'm able to do. Let me just see. Did we get my questions yet? They're coming. And it's generating. And I'll give it just another moment while it's going. But all of that is available within our LMS that is able to be generated. And that is coming out. This is out now, the generating the AI questions, but generating pictures, charts, tone, languages. I believe it's 13 languages that it will generate as well. That's coming out in October. So that's something that you can certainly uh, look forward to as we go through. And while that's going ahead and generating for the um, question bank using our AI, I'm going to, um, and I live in where it's my, um, there we go. All right, we have some, the internet is moving a little bit slow for me this morning. Okay, so here's some that I've done already before generated, just saying like the history of geometry. What the system allows you to do is to preview. So it, you can preview the questions. It already gives the feedback for the questions. It will, if I wanted to go ahead and edit the question right here within the system, it gives me the ability to edit the question. It gives me feedback so that here is the correct answer. It puts automatically in the feedback for the um, question as well. All of this is being generated from AI. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my question bank. and sort by date. All right, it's taking longer than anticipated, but I'll come back to that as well. So another thing from our open LMS that helps us to stand out as well is we have the ability to also have programs. So with programs, we consider programs to be, um, it could be a course or a set of courses that someone has to take in a certain order or not necessarily or in any order. And what that allows us to be able to do with programs is if you have perhaps non-traditional um uh, students or non-traditional programs, it allows you to have them see what they have to take in the series. So I'm going to go ahead and share this tab with you right now. So here I can see I have two programs in my system, one for directors, one for HR onboarding. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this HR onboarding series. And what's I'm going to point out is the content. Right here, these are the courses that are within this particular program. So if I wanted to get an HR certificate or cert 
certificate, I could say, oh, excuse me, I have to take these three courses all in order. We do have the flexibility to also say, oh, well, they can take them in any order. They can take them um, at least two out of the three. So you have flexibility in that area. So the way that it works is that if I said, hey, you got to take those courses all in order as the user, they would only be able to access the first course. Once they've completed that course, then they would be able to access the other courses in sequential order. However, if I said, ah, you can take them all in any order, it doesn't matter, then all of the courses would be available for the user at that particular time. So it allows you flexibility in that area. I can even set up special notifications for when a program, when someone has been um, allocated to their program, when it's coming close to due, and when they've completed, and these other areas as well. I'm able to create specialized notifications with um, customize them with their name, so with like merge fields, and add that information to the notification. And if I so wish, I can also add a certificate to that particular program so that the users know they have completed it and they have their own proof. And that information for their certificate would be held within their profile that they would be able to access at any time. So any certificate that they've earned is always associated with them. If by any chance they weren't able to access the system, you as an administrator would be able to bring up their certificate. And this is just a sample of what a certificate could look like within the system. And of course, all of these are customizable. So this is just a sample certificate for that particular program. So now what I'd like to do is I am going to go back and just give you another um, tour and I'm going to share this screen. Okay, wonderful. So at this time, my AI questions have um, been added to my question bank. So I'm going to go into my course, pardon me, instead of generating new ones, because I don't want you to have to wait for that. And go to home. How we make it out in the chat, Trevor and Ivana? Doing well, Tyra. Um, I awesome. think there's a question about um, data analytics that I believe was related to um, the question generator. And I didn't know if there's anything you wanted to speak to there. Okay, I will take a look in just a moment. Okay, so here are my questions that generated for the um, AI. Um, and if you could just maybe repeat that question for me, Trevor, in just a moment. But you can see that the system went in and generated these questions. I asked it for four questions. It gave me four questions. Um, I can edit the name of the question, the number, but I can also preview. It says, what is the car who is the current head coach of the Philadelphia Eagles? Some of my friends may say that might change soon, but you can go ahead and see that information. So you can have it generate those questions in this question bank. I can take those that bank of questions and add it to any quiz that I am creating um, as well. So I'm able to do quite a few things with that. And it just gives me just more flexibility and the ability to um, 
have more time because I'm letting the system, I'm using AI in a manner that allows me to put my time and attention to my lessons. And I'm sorry, Trevor, if you could repeat your question. Yeah, the question was, how about data analytics uh, as you were going through setting up um, PLD? So if there's any kind of analytics or reporting on the back end, I think that's what their question was speaking to. Okay, yes, I can. When I'm looking at the PLD, the first thing that I would look at when I was uh, viewing that information, and I can... I'm going to, I can access it here from my side view, but I can also, so here I can see these just as a quick snapshot for analytics that this PLD has run. I just have a few times right here in the system. Um, so I'm able to see it there to see who got it. I can, of course, see um, the rule name which rule was uh, fired, these students entered. I can, of course, download this into a CSV or Excel and so forth. I can do that. But that gives me actually a nice segue to reporting and to analytics. So within my course, I have the ability to look at analytics. I'm going to go right to my dashboard. But I also have, so I can look at um, open reports within my course. I can filter to see if I have any, I, I don't have too much in here right now, but I would be able to look at that. I can look at grades. I can look at activities. I can look at all of that. But I also have the um, ability to look at my grade book to see what's there. I don't have, I will skip my tour. I don't have too many things going on. This was a, a new course, but as things started to be graded, I would be able to see it here. But I do have a tool that we use. Um, I have what's called our open reports engine and our open reports engine allows me to create some reports that have um, some data visualization attached to them, as well as some just the information. So this one just so happens to be a top courses. So what I'm looking at here are courses and how many people are in it. So here I see my stress management. There's seven people enrolled and I can see who all is actually in those particular classes. I'm able to um, edit and change things depending on the role and the rights that you want to give someone um, who is actually using the system. So what I'm able to do, and I'm just opening up another screen, is I'm gonna go here. So I have right here a few reports that have been created. So there's completion reports, just different reports. This one is a very simple report. It's a list of users. So here I come in, I can create my report. These are the different ways that I can export them. I can check them all or at least one of them. I do need to check and give a description. What columns, let me go ahead and save. I pick what columns I actually want to see on my report. So here on my columns tab is what I wanna see. So here I have the user's full name, username. I can move this information around. I can say, you know what? I don't really wanna, see, I don't, care about their username. I don't want to delete it. I just want to hide it. I can add any of these fields statistics wise, um, any of their, excuse me, user created fields as well. I can sort it a certain way. All of these are available to you to create your own reports. 
graphs, filters as well, who has access. And all of those are things we go over during onboarding. But here's a long list of here are the users courses started, enrolled, favorite colors, so forth. It probably the default is purple, I'm assuming, but that's a good choice. Um, so I have the ability to create reports. I can take this report, I can export it, I could create a graph. That is something that comes right within our LMS and is right for you to actually um, select. So with that, we are coming up on time so that we can um, ask questions and so forth. If you want, that was just a sneak peek. If you want a more tailored and in-depth demo of the product, we'd be happy to give you one. Um, always like to say, when you are selecting an LMS, you want to make sure it's one that enables your faculty members to be able to use it freely, one that is engaging, as also one that is reliable. When you think of that, all of those things we at OpenLMS can provide. And with that, I am going to take it now to questions because we have it until 1130. And were there any trust questions in the chat or Trevor, you handled them all? I can't tell. Working on it. Okay. <laughs> well, if anyone else has any questions or something they want to see, say. It's a lot to show in, in a quick amount of time. Are we at that awkward silence time or, oh, open AI rights. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm scrolling through the, da, 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 da. oh, if it's, Saul, oh, I just saw his question about the um, data protection policies for features. Saul, let me get back to you on that. I think we will have your information and that can, Melissa, we can get back to you and Saul regarding those questions because I don't want to tell you the um, wrong thing. And I just want to make sure that from our product team, we have a, an answer that makes sense. Can I point you to guides for setting up the course order certificate? Sure. If you were using the program, I'm going to go ahead and I think I can still share my screen. Um, and I will go here. Sorry, it's do, 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 where I will. The way that that will work, though, is that you would um, trying to go. OK, there we go. Is that you when you're setting up the order for the uh, the program? Let me just go back here. Oops. I am not an admin on that one. There we go. So if you were using the program feature, what you will want to do to get that information to be in order, I think that's the question. I'm on many screens today. 
is that you just have to list them how you want them in order. And let's say you put them out of order, you can just simply drag and drop them into a different order. So let me go ahead and sub program. So if I was, here's a sample program on a different database. But this one says all in order. If I wanted the origins of Western philosophy to be first, I could just simply say, move it. And now it's up in the uh, top position. Did that answer your question, Crystal? You're welcome.